Hello guys and welcome to episode 5 of my HTML tutorial series. I am Knowledge Highway from YouTube.com and I'm going to be teaching you tables today. Now this is where things start to get a little bit more complex so you're gonna have to learn quite a few tags today and it's gonna be a lot to take in. You're probably gonna have to go over this a good few times to remember it uh, but a good way to learn is to reference www.w3schools.com whenever you need help on anything. Uh, they have all the syntax, everything you have to type out to do various things. Think of these video tutorials as just a helping hand in understanding those kind of things. So, shall we get started? Let's first go over a little bit on the theory on how tables work. Let's open up paint, cause, cause, cause why not? So, tables. What do you know about tables? Oh, if only paint was not so terrible now. So I'm gonna do some real hand-drawn drawings right here to try and make you understand. I'm gonna draw a table quickly. Uh, or what looks vaguely like some kind of table. So, in a table you have rows which are each of these things. Each kind of horizontal Oh gosh, the mouse is just sticking, it's just not happening. But each one of these is a row. So each horizontal line of this is a row. Hopefully you can get what I mean. So, for example, the top row would be this cell and this cell. And then the middle row would be this one and this one. And the bottom row would be this one and this one. Or, in other words, first row, second row, third row. Okay, so what's a cell? I've just been talking about a cell, but I did not mention what a cell is. Well, a cell is each of these individual boxes here. Now, in HTML, these are referred to as, well, using the TD tag, which stands for table data. So each one of these is classed as a bit of data, I guess, in, as far as HTML is concerned. There is one other, though, that is a bit less useful, but I guess it's still something, uh, called, which is a tag called TH, which just stands for table heading. And that it would be, for example, if you're going to have a bit of bold centered text to describe this column, uh, then you would make that a table heading. This is all going to make far more sense when I actually show you the code, but for now, just giving you a vague idea of how tables work in the real world and in HTML. Uh, one thing I did not mention there is each row, uh, the row tag is TR in HTML, but we're about to go over that anyway. So, now that you get what I'm talking about, we're going to talk about bits of tables. Let's get to making some code. So let's open up our index.htm. If you don't know what I'm talking about when I say that, you need to go back and look at the other tutorials because uh, we've been doing this for a good five episodes now and everyone's used to doing this. So let's open up with good practices and do our open point bracket exclamation mark doc type and then lowercase html. Under that, we're going to open up our HTML element with a HTML open tag and then HTML close tag uh, to close off that element. And we're going to do the same thing for body. Remembering that everything within the body is content on the page or everything the user sees. Now, in here, we're going to put our table. So, let's get started. So, the first tag that you're going to want to remember is just very straightforward. It's the table tag. So open pointy bracket, table, close pointy bracket. Now you're going to want to close that element, so the table element, by doing a close tag of table. Now, within here, notice that I'm pressing the tab button. I haven't mentioned this in a couple of episodes, but this is just so that everything looks nice. You do not have to do this, but it is recommended so that your code is much more readable and in the long run you can maintain it and uh, know where to look when you're trying to edit it. All sorts. So it's very useful. So now within these two table tags in the table element, we are going to open by tag type tr close tag. Now we're going to go two lines down and I'm going to close the tr tag to close the element. Now what is this? Well we've just gone on over it. That is one row. I wish I'd kept that freaking drawing up. <laughs> 
<laughs> me and my terrible skills. But basically, that's one row. So one horizontal group of boxes in the table. So within that, we need a bit of data. So let's open tag td and then take new line, close tag td. This is not where the way I'll lay it out later on. This is very spaced out right now, but this is just so it's readable for you guys. And within that, I'm gonna write, this is a piece, whoops, piece of data. Or probably better would be, this is a cell. I guess we'll, we'll type that, this is a cell. Because really, in the real world, you would call a bit of da table data, as HTML calls it, that would actually be called a cell, or one rectangular box. So... Let's see what we got. Goosh gosh. Goosh gosh. Press the wrong button. And somehow it duplicated HTML. I don't know why. So I'm saving that. And then as per usual, we're gonna load up our page. Refresh it if you already have it loaded up. And it says this is a cell. It's not very useful. It, it doesn't look, it just looks like a paragraph, right? Well, let's fix that so you can actually see this. In older browsers, it will show up like kind of like a table. In newer ones, you just won't see it. So let's add an attribute to the table tag. Uh, we're gonna call this border equals open quotation mark. I'm gonna type in four close quotation mark. So this will make the border four pixels. Uh, just so you can see things and remembering that this is an attribute. It describes uh, what, how the table element should display. So saving that, make sure you're saving, and refresh your page, and now you can see, hey, this is starting to look like a table. You can see the outlines and stuff. So, it's not much of a table though. Right now it just kind of looks like a box. So, what should we do? We should add more data. So, after your closed TR TD tag, or table data tag, we're gonna add another open table data tag. Make sure you look carefully at what I'm doing here because it's very difficult to describe it in a way that you'll be able to type it out without looking. So make sure you're looking at what I'm doing and I'm gonna close it again underneath as I have been doing. Now I'm gonna type in within this uh, table data element, this is a second cell. So, this, as you can see, this is still within the same table row element. So it's all gonna be on the same row. So let's refresh our page. And as you can see, there's two cells, one after another, or two bits of data. I probably should have just called this data, actually, uh, just so as not to confuse you. So I'm just gonna rename these again. Good to re remember both ways of saying it anyway. So this is a data, great grammar, I know. And this is a second data. So what if we want to add another row? Well, we do that by after the closed row tag or closed table row tag, we're gonna add another open one. So uh, pointy bracket, T, R, close pointy bracket. Gonna take a couple new lines, gonna close that table row tag as we have been doing with all tags so far. Uh, gonna open another TD tag or table data tag within the uh, TR element that we just written out. And then I'm gonna close that a couple of lines down, so slash TD. And then I'm gonna type in, this is a third data. Cause we're not using grammar, so we may as well continue not using grammar. And then I'm gonna save that, and then we're gonna see what that looks like. So now we have a second row, and the third bit of data is down here now. Uh, so I guess you're kind of seeing a pattern now, hopefully. Um, let's add another bit of data. So on the same row as we've just been working on, I'm gonna, after closing that last bit of data, the last TD tag or table data tag, gonna open another one, open pointy bracket forward slash TD to close it, and then write this is a fourth bit of data data. Boom. So now we should have a fourth bit. Remembering to save, again, I know it's not obvious that I'm saving because I'm pre pressing control S, but I am saving every time and refreshing every time. And now you can see all four bits of data are in our little table, starting to look like a proper table. 
So what if we want to add another row, but we want it to be before all this stuff we've written? Well, that's not a problem because we just go to the top here between table and the first TR and we're going to add another TR element in here as another row. going to close it, paying close attention to what I'm typing here because I'm not going to go into too much detail in terms of spelling it out letter by letter for you. Then going to, within that element, going to open a TD tag as a table data tag. Um, and I'm going to close that. And within the table data element, I'm going to write, Hello! <laughs> and then I'm going to add another table data. I know this is getting tiresome. I'm really sorry, guys. <laughs> but this is how you learn, damn it. Uh, so I'm going to add another table data tag. And within that one, I'm going to write, World. And then I'm going to close uh, the table data tag. Boom! Again, this formatting makes it so much easier to read. If I was to have all this on the same level, then it would be very difficult to tell where table bits of table data open and where bits of to table rows open and the overall structure of the table would just not make sense. So, save it. Open, run it, and now we have the hello world just above these bits of data. So, hopefully that we're, <laughs> you understand that now. Uh, one last thing that I want to go over is table heading, which is exactly the same as table data, except from instead of TD, it's TH. So I'm going to change both these table data elements to table heading add elements by changing the TD to TH even on the closing tag. Remember to get the closing tag as well. Uh, I'm doing that for both hello and world. I'm gonna save it and then I'm gonna run it. And now both hello and world are centered and bold. So those are headings now. Those are headings in terms of the table and we can switch back world to just a table data or a cell and then refresh and now that can be just a bit of table data, but this can also be a heading at the same time. Sorry guys, I'm kind of tired as I'm doing this, so this is probably not making as much sense as it should. But uh, hopefully you can grasp this. So finally, last thing I'm going to do is remove the border altogether. So I'm going to say border equals open quotation mark zero, close quotation mark, editing that attribute that we gave earlier for the table tag making it zero, saving, and we're gonna press enter, and now look, everything is still formatted like a table, but now without those ugly borders. So that's basically the end result that you're looking for. Now you might be thinking, why am I doing this, Jules? This seems stupid, this seems pointless. When am I gonna use a table on my website? Well, practical uses will appear at later dates, so, uh, and I will go over them when we get to them. Probably much more so when we get to doing CSS, but for now just know table tags are important. Learning the table tags uh, is fairly important. Not as important as it was years ago, but it is still important now. Anyway, don't get too caught up in that. Make sure you practice and hopefully you'll come back for the next tutorial next time when we will be doing... What will we be doing? Probably lists. So that sounds just as fun as tables, right? Yay! <laughs> okay, guys, thanks for watching. See you guys soon. Goodbye!